It's very, very rare that you see such an accomplished debut feature. It's fabulously entertaining and funny and features some of the most spectacular dialogue I've seen and heard in a long, long time. You read the script and you say, okay, I want to be this guy. And then you got to find out um, what's behind all this, uh, you know, fairly eccentric, aggressive behavior. You begin to discover that there's a kind of a hidden softness to this guy, even though he's quite an animal when he gets out there. Uh, and that's where the fun is. The more you look at it, the more you find. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm in a part of the world that I've never been in before and uh, drinking more Guinness than anybody should, but just really having a great time and, and uh, having the experience of working in an area that is really another character in the movie. Basically, you know, it's set up as a sort of buddy-buddy cop movie, but it doesn't really play out that way. It's a very sort of dark black comedy. And I'm a big fan of like um, American movies from the 70s, so I'm sort of playing around with all those kinds of old-time movies, you know. Uh, so it has sort of elements of comedy, elements of a thriller at the end. Uh, and we're just going to wait and see how it plays tonight in LA. It's played really well everywhere else, so we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for John Michael McDonough and Mr. Brendan Gleeson, and Mr. Don Cheadle. Uh, no, I never really write with an actor in mind, but I think once it was written, um, it's very, I mean, Brendan Don my first two choices, and it was, it's very hard to see them, watch the film now without them, really. You know, I hadn't read anything like it, and I really uh, took to the humor and the, the dark tone of, of the piece, and I thought it was just brilliant. I think as far as the comedy goes, you know, it's, I see myself as sort of an equal opportunity misanthrope, so it's, <laughs> the, the Americans get hammered, yes, but so does everybody else. You know, the Irish get it, the English get it, even the Welsh get it, and they've done nothing to nobody. <laughs> that was my favorite thing. Nobody was, you know, in your, t everybody got taken down. I mean, I love when my character, when we're looking at the, the surveillance tape and he goes, Devani, and I go, oh, which one, the Italian? You know, it's just like, <laughs> everybody's prejudiced, everybody's bigoted, everybody's got this bent. And it was the whole culture of the whole film. So I felt like it really was a great way to do it. And I mean, I think there are a lot of masks involved in this film. And certainly Boyle wears a mask. Uh, as Don was saying, his heart is not in any way prejudiced against really anybody, just per se. The whole character came out of me labouring for that long, having had a bad film made and being filled with sort of bitterness, rage and contempt. That's where, <laughs> that's where Jerry Ball comes from. <laughs> Well, uh, when we were making it, Brendan and I used to argue because he said uh, Ball survives and I said he dies. Uh, we never actually asked Don what he thought. I think if the movie performs, there's definitely a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so please go out and see it a bunch of times and tell everybody. <laughs> and in the sequel, uh, I think Boyle comes to Atlanta. <laughs> now you try it out.